Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have The Ring, and they have a new album called The Ring Squared Project Cypher, which was released on May 28th, and right now I'm being joined by Don to share some more information about this release, what went into it, and the pre-roll here, Don said it's quite the story, so I'm looking forward to hearing it. Now, Don, welcome to the show. Thanks, John. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great to have you on. Now, I know this is going to sound like a really strange first question, but in the video that I saw for Cypher, I couldn't help but notice that you're standing in front of a wizard amp. I'm, I'm sitting in front of it right now, too. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. For those who don't know, that is a Canadian amp. It is. Yeah. Um, I'm a Marshall guy. I've always been, you know, uh, I guess in in search of that of, of that tone, and and sometimes Marshall doesn't really deliver a Marshall tone. So you have to, you know, you're finding modded amps. Like I've I've got a couple, I got three Marshalls here, and they've all been modded um, in some way because the you know the the stock circuit you know won't have enough gain or something, right? Like they they've stuck to their guns on that. But the Wizard, uh, which is uh, Rick St. Pierre, who was the ACDC's tech right for a long time, and now he builds. You know, it's it's a call it a Marshall on steroids, and I have the modern. <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. the The tone is uh, it's holy grail tone for sure. Mm-hmm. Is that amazing? What, is that what we're hearing on the record by chance? Um, so it it appears on I think uh, three songs. Okay, three songs. It's I use I use a combination of things on on the record. Um, I'm not good with mics, and and I, I I do the the guitar recording at home, but I've got tons of technology, but mics are mics are a voodoo I haven't figured out. <laughs> so rather than waste time to figure it out, or you know you know we don't we don't have proper studios where I live, so um, Axe Effects, you know the 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 box, the modeling box, like they've come so far and the tones that you can get are so, so amazing. Mm-hmm. But the, also with a load box, you can feed uh, a head into the load box and then feed that into the Axe effects and use just the cab sims, which they have a million of. And you can adjust mic placements, type of mic, like everything, right? So yeah. the wizard appears there, but it's through a load box and through the, the cab sims in the axe effects. So there's actually no miking done. It's and it, so it sounds exactly the same every single time, you know, heat, humidity, all the things that affect a room, uh, don't come into play. So yeah. it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That sounds like its own kind of voodoo, its own kind of microphone voodoo. A little bit, <laughs> but, but it's liable and, and, it, and it doesn't take any, any surgery to, to, to get it right. Yeah. Okay, load boxes. All the all the tech nerds right now are probably on fire. Is it uh, speaking of some more Canadian engineering? Is it a radio box, or do they not make a load box? Uh, I use the the Torpedo Captor X, okay. which has got a lot of different good stuff going on, and it's amazing how the, the t- it passes the tone right through. Wow, very cool stuff. Yeah. So for anybody who's not sure what's going on right now, load boxes are really quite powerful tools. Don just described one of the many uses you could do with them where basically you're going to take this massive powerhouse and make it sizable enough to go through, I guess, other, other realms such as an axe effects. Yeah. It it basically, you're, you're, you're simulating a speaker is what you're doing so that you're not booming it into the room and trying to pick it up with a mic because mic placements and, you know, volume, like there's so many things that you have to get right to use a mic. Whereas this, you just dial it in and it's the same every time. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, uh, let's go over this record. I've actually got the music video up right now for Cypher, uh, where I'm watching the Morse code right now at the very current moment. Nice. Tell us about this album, the ring squared project Cypher. And you mentioned, you mentioned there's a story behind it. So take her away. So The Ring um, is my band, and The Ring was a band, and uh, local musicians, and all, you know, really great players, and, and we, we, we did a record in 2017, uh, just called The Ring, um, and, you know, we did a few shows, and, and I marketed, marketed it very, very poorly, uh, so it, it didn't really get anywhere, but 
you know, sitting in my shelf or my hard drive or whatever. Um, so we did some shows and it was pretty, it was fun. You know, we, we opened for Diamond Head and Anvil and a few other things. It, it was, it was great fun and some cool shows, but you know, it kind of lost some steam, but I didn't lose any steam. I, I had a lot of, a lot more songs that I wanted to do. So I started working on how to go about that. I've, I've got lots of songs. So my, my buddy and, and bass player, Jason, he, and the guy, he, actually he did that video as well, which is super cool. Uh, he he connected me through social media to Thomas Lang, mm -hmm. who's a world renowned drummer and also happens to be quite a quite an amazing guy. And uh, I just I said to to Thomas, you know, I've got a project. I'm, I'm I need some you know seven tracks of drumming. Are are you interested? And and he said yes. <laughs> I sent him the songs of, ahead of it at first, and he, and he said love the songs and. And uh, it sounds really interesting, and I'd love to do this for you. So I thought, wow, like, I, I feel like I'm in an alternate universe, this, you know, because he's, he was on the cover, actually, of, of Modern Drummer last August, you know, kind of right around the same time that he was doing my tracking. Yeah. He, you know, he, he's being interviewed to be on the cover of Modern Drummer, and, he, and, he's, and he's playing my song. So it, it was definitely a surreal moment. And he was, he was fantastic. And obviously, you can see his playing. And the interesting thing about him, you know, you can see in the video, like, he... He sat with the songs and he learned them front to back. So, it, and, he, and he, what he said to me was, uh, "I don't want this to feel like a session. I want it to feel like a band." So he actually learned the songs, all of the songs front to back, and he played them straight through. So, and you know, he, he'd do five or six takes and, and send me the best one. So, what you're seeing in that video is actually him playing the song, wow. which is super cool. Yeah, I mean, you kind of mentioned it was a bit surreal, but. How did you end up feeling about that? Oh, it's <laughs> it, it, it's an out of body experience, like you know, the, and and not just Thomas. I mean, with Mark Benia was the singer on this, and and again, he came to me through Thomas. Like Thomas liked the project so much that he recommended his buddy to do the singing on it, and you know, I I love the singing, and, and it's not the vision that I had. Ironically, you know. Uh, Mark has a very smooth vocal style, like almost, you know, he almost has a Daryl Hall kind of smoothness to his to his vocals. Uh, vocals, and you know, I I pictured almost a growl, and and the demos that I sent to him were kind of in that vein, mm -hmm. and he took it in a, you know, he did it his own way, really, and and it was, you know, I think it turned out fantastic. Yeah, I was looking it up. I've got the issue right here, Modern Drummer, August twenty twenty. Thomas Lang, he's on the front cover. And there he is. People don't know it, but what he's actually jamming to is your song. Yes. How cool is that? Yeah. Well, I think it shows uh, consummate professional comes to mind. He didn't just take you as a number and say, cool, yeah, I'll go ahead and do these tracks. Here's the amount, blah, blah, blah. I'll get them to you. And there's one side of that equation where you're like, whoa, these are his drums. But he took it further and said, no, no, no. I don't want this to sound like I'm just a session musician. I want this to sound like we're playing in the same room. Right. Right. And yeah. he did. And it does. And, you know, all the, and, and then when Brian Beller came on to play, he, Brian Beller played uh, bass on three songs and he, and he was concerned about that. Cause I, I mentioned it to him. Brian's very personable and, and really great guy. And I mentioned that Thomas played these live and he went, Ooh, geez, I don't know about that. Then, you know, we might have to fix them. And I'm a little worried about that, you know, cause kick and kick and bass have to be like tight. Right. Yeah. So he, he was a bit concerned about that. But then when, when he got to me, he went, eh, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out. Yeah. Okay. That's quite the story. Um, getting all these people together. Now, something you also mentioned, Don, was that it wasn't your vision. But now that you're standing, I guess, in the promised land, despite not having that as a vision, are you happy with what came about? Oh my God! It's better than I could have hoped for sure. It's mm -hmm. fantastic, and, and you know when I when I do these things, like I do a complete demo. So when I when I handed the songs to all these guys, like they were complete. Like I, you know, I I have loops, so I create a drum track. All the guitars are obviously me. I play a bass, you know, and I and I I do my very best to sing. So I, I write all the words and then I I sing them as best my feeble abilities will allow, mm -hmm. just to get the phrasing and the idea of melody or whatever to the guys. So I sent that to all of them, and they and, and they actually you know they wanted to hear what what my vision for the songs were. 
And mm-hmm. and in some cases, they they stayed straight to the script, and in some cases, they they said no. And and Brian was was one example on on one of the songs on the record. I had composed this you know ridiculously elaborate bass line to go against uh, a ridiculously elaborate guitar line, and he said no, that's not what we're going to do here. And and he he simplified it and. You can feel the the bass push the song now because he he made it that way, you know, as opposed to what some wanky thing that I had done. You know, it, hurt, it hurt my feelings at the time, of course, but you know, he he was a hundred percent right, and, and I I trusted him to do what he what he needed to do, and and then really with all the moves the same. Yeah, cool. Uh, now I guess when once you finally had all of these uh, sources brought together. What was the next step then? Did you have somebody do mixing and mastering for you? Yeah, so mixing again is uh, it's it's a it's a voodoo too. Like it's an <laughs> art science. Like you know the the first record I did it at Metalworks in Toronto, and um, I I don't like it. You know I, I don't like the way it turned out. And you think you go to Metalworks, but you know if the if the fella sitting across the desk doesn't really understand what you're trying to get to or, or, or you know, what the music is, yeah. you're never, you're never going to connect on that. Right. So, you, you know, I ended up compromising because I, I ran out of steam, but with this one, uh, I actually went to Forrester Savell, who's a guy in Australia who actually did Brian Beller's. He did this epic, you know, 26 song double album last year and Forrester did the mixing and mastering for him. So he said, I trust Forrester to, to, to understand this genre and and to do the, the right job. So that's what I did, and it, I, I think he nailed it. Yeah, that name sounds super familiar, and I'm trying to look it up right now. But, um, yeah, it definitely sounds very familiar, and I'm imagining, speaking of amp sims and whatnot, uh, there's a company called Neural DSP that makes really good amp sims on the market. Speaking of modern marshals, I have two... Fortin amp uh, models that are both mo- modded marshals, uh, just absolutely guttural, brutal. I don't know how he did it, but cool. Because uh, I'm a marshal guy myself as well. Um, nice. And uh, I I remember seeing in the preset somewhere a producer, and Forrester sounds familiar. But um, yeah, that's interesting. I'm looking at the Metalworks. I know I've heard of it before. I'm taking a look at it again, and I'm going, wow. That is the studio, but you know it doesn't matter what level of technology you have or how many channels you have on your SSL board. If you don't have the artistic side to connect with the artist's vision and make that happen, you could do with less than a 32-channel SSL board. Right, Right. And it was cool being in the hallowed halls, you know, where Rush, or Triumph, you know, I think uh, Gilmore was in the building the, the day we were there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's history and it, it's like, it is the hallowed halls, uh, but, yeah. but he didn't get it right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Groovy. Okay. What else is there to talk about? Don, The Light. You want to check about the, talk about the track, The Light. Take us through The Light and why this song to chat about. Well, um, the first two singles that uh, we agreed to, to release was Cypher, uh, the instrumental, which you're looking at the video of, or you were. Uh, and then The Light will be the second single. I think we're kicking that one out next week. So um, it's really it's really difficult, you know, to, to choose a song when you love them all. But, you know, uh, The Light seemed to jump a little bit. And it's got some great drumming, some really, Mark did a really great job on the vocals, uh, great. Jason played a fantastic bass line, and, and of course Thomas is a beast on the drums. It has cool riffs. It has lots of changes. Of, you know, kind of a, a more open chorus. So it just it just felt like a, a good single. Uh, I did use the wizard on that, so you you got um, you got much more roundness in the guitar tone. The other Marshalls and the, and the Sims of the Marshalls tend to be a little bit sharper, mm-hmm. so they cut the mix a little better, but they don't have that that deepness that uh, that the wizard does and you, you hear it on that song like for sure yeah yeah it reminds me back speaking of metalworks does i think uh audio engineering school as well which in today's day that's how you can afford to keep that that the air conditioning bill alone for that ssl port um but i remember in school learning 
that marshals can sometimes be a little thin. So speaking of microphone voodoo, they were talking about taking a ribbon microphone and putting it at a particular corner on the cabinet to just pick up low end hum to, right. to add some body to the marshal because it can end up sounding a little thin sometimes. You're 100% right. And, and my marshals are all modded for that reason because they can be thin. So one of them is modded by Dave Friedman. Fried, Friedman amps, of course. Yep. yep. He did the BE and HPE mods on this thing, so it's it's a plexi with with those mods in it. So it's it's a monster live too. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, I'm looking at the information. Is there anything that we missed, Don? Um, Chat about Cypher. Yeah, Brian Beller, Thomas Lang. Yep. Um, Mark was great. Uh, it's just, I guess, I guess, you know, in, in summary, it's, you know, I'm just a guy who writes songs and, you know, to have the opportunity to, to put them out with these guys playing on them is, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. And I think any, you know, in this day and age, any, with internet and whatever else, anything is possible. And, yeah. you know, people should give up the karaoke singing and, and do their own thing. And it's, you know, you can find, <laughs> you can find guys to, to help you out with that. How do you really feel about karaoke, Don? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there was a great article in the, in the uh, I think it was uh, Global News or something. It was Alan Cross from Q107, and he was talking about this sort of thing where, you know, independent artists, like he gets 800 CDs a day or something like that. And, yeah. you know, it's it, just keep plugging away. If you love it, then do it for the love and, and, you know, not for the money because there is none. Yeah. I do it for love. Cool. All right. Well, I believe that gets all the questions that we chatted about. Wizard Amps and some other Marshall uh, modifications. We talked about Thomas Lang. We talked about karaoke just now. We talked about uh, Cypher in the music video. We chatted about the light. We chatted about the whole project and the various guest musicians, uh, the importance of finding the right uh, scientist to work on your artistic direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah. The, 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 mix, the mix guy is, is the guy who makes it all happen or not, or not I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Cool. All right. Well, if, unless there's anything else, thank you so much, Don, for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Well, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. 